care for these characters. Like, what the hell? It's crazy. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jalen and today I have a review of Crossroads by Jonathan Franzen coming out in October. As you might know, I usually have a beer or a glass of wine with me when I do my videos. It's a little on the early side, plus I got some IPAs yesterday from my local craft beer shop, but when I got home I realized that they are very old and so I have to return the cans because IPAs that are old are trash, disgusting, nope, they need to be fresh. So. No drink with me today other than my water, but that's fine. So it's been a while since I've done an individual book review. Um, I usually don't read books that are this long. So this book is 580 pages, at least in the proof copy. I borrowed this copy from my friend who got a galley. So this is not sent to me by the publisher, but um, I did get a chance to read it, got very lucky. And so super stoked for that. But this is my first Jonathan Franzen book. I do own a copy of Freedom. I bought it when I was like a teenager. I had seen some buzz. I think I bought it at like Target or something <laughs> when I was trying to like get back into reading, but I think it was a little bit too big brain for me at the time. And so yeah, I've had it, never read it. And so I did see that this book was coming out this year. And now that I'm more active in book reviewing, I really wanted to check him out and see what all the talk is about because this book in particular, it made the rounds on Twitter because in the synopsis, it says something along the lines of Jonathan Franzen being the greatest novelist of his generation, basically. And there was a huge discussion about who writes the synopsis for books and whether it is right or wrong, I guess, to make that make that claim that the author is the leading novelist of his time, which is kind of funny because at the same time, the publishers are trying to sell these books. And so I don't really know if Jonathan Franzen said, yeah, put that on my book. But I mean, I don't think we can really hold him accountable for that. But not sure. But yeah, so I was interested from there seeing why people tended to have a strong opinion about Jonathan Franzen. I guess he's a very controversial or some people find him to be annoying or pretentious or something. And so I was just curious to see because at the same time, a lot of people said, yeah, like his writing slaps, but he's annoying, basically. So I was like, yeah, let me just take a chance on his new book and see what the hype is all about. And so Crossroads is the first in a planned trilogy. That is wild to me because this book is so long already. And so when I was reading it, I was like, wait, what's gonna happen? But I did see from the synopsis that it's supposed to track this family, I believe, through our present moment. So this book is set in 1971, mostly, and I'm thinking that the next one's going to be set around the turn of the millennium, and then the last one will likely be the present moment or maybe a little bit in the future. That's just my prediction, but but yeah, so I heard he slaps, I was so excited. Family saga, I love those. I love a good family drama. And so I went to this book very receptive to whatever he was gonna give me. And let me just tell you, this book is phenomenal. I understand the hype around his work generally. I think I would say this is a very strong, good plot, good writing novel. He has a sense of propulsion in his writing. He keeps you hooked. It's a lot of dialogue. It's a lot of character development. At times it can get kind of interior. He mixes in flashbacks. He just does all the good things of a novel, basically. Um, he just does them so well with prose that is just so luminous and so like, ooh, 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 you know? He just knows what he's doing and I appreciate that. I totally understand why he is as acclaimed as he is. I have not read a book this long in so long. A 600 page tome about a single family is just not something that I find myself inclined to pick up these days. My attention span has been a little bit zapped, especially amidst the pandemic. And so I wanted to kind of get out of that through reading this book. And I'm so glad I did because I really enjoyed my time sitting with a big book like this, sitting with this family, and really considering what Franzen's doing and setting up for the remaining two novels in this trilogy. Before I get into some of the general themes here, I'll set up the general premise. So we follow the Hildebrands in this town in Illinois. It's called New Prospect. So we have Russ, he is the father, patriarch of the family, who was a pastor at their local church. And we meet Marion, his wife and mother to the children. And then the children, the oldest is Clem. He is in college, but he's battling with the decision to, to fight in the Vietnam War, which he knows will upset his family, but he's feeling inclined to do so. The sister, Becky, she's a very popular girl at her high school, and she is working through a crush that she has on a guy who's in a band and generally falling into the clicky culture of her high school. Clem and Becky's younger brother, he is a brilliant child who is so smart, but he is battling with addiction. And then we have the youngest, Judson, who is just a young, very nice 
boy. He's not really much of the focus of this book, but I really liked his um, involvement for some of the characters in their arcs. But so that's basically the setup of these characters. And what is rooted at the center of this book is this group of teens that meet at the church. It's called Crossroads. It's kind of like an after school social setting in which the members of this church, the youngest, they all kind of meet together and they try to be as honest as they can, talk open about their struggles and um, confide in one another as, as members of this church. And so a lot of the social fraughtness of this book is involved with this group called Crossroads. What kind of starts the conflict in this novel is we have Russ, the patriarch and father. He is kind of ousted from the group with this other guy that comes in. His name is Rick Ambrose. And you see how he feels kind of hurt by what happens. And he's kind of cast out from the group. But he sees his kids, they still make the decision to join Crossroads despite this. And so you see him kind of feeling hurt about that but he doesn't want to you know, step on his kids' toes and they still try to do it for their own development, I guess, in their own desire to kind of seek social standing and to be po with the popular kids and they all have their own reasons for doing it. But that's the general setup. And what's really interesting is that we open on the book from the perspective of Russ and you see him questioning his marriage to Marion. And in short, he is considering an affair with another woman who goes to the church. She's younger and you see him battling with this desire for her while being in the marriage. And so immediately Russ is portrayed as this kind of not likable guy with constant thoughts of cheating on his wife, but he's the pastor of the church. He doesn't want to be caught being involved with this woman who, the parishioner of the church, and you see him take her on a couple of his tasks that he's assigned as the pastor of the church. So that's to start, but then we also meet Marion, kind of get her perspective on things in this marriage. And for me personally, Marion is the root of this novel. She is one of the best characters I've ever read. I was so fascinated with the way that Franzen was able to work in her life story in this familial context and really get to the root of a lot of the themes here. And so before I go into that even more, I think it's necessary to just kind of generally talk about the themes here. I won't really go into many of the plot points because there's so many twists and turns here in which you learn more about all these characters and their desires and the way that they're at a, you know, a literal crossroads at the start of this novel. It takes place mostly on December 23rd, so Christmas Eve, Eve. But through that, we get a lot of flashbacks and then near the end of the novel, it kind of jumps a little bit. The themes here, and what really surprised me about this book so much is I generally hate reading books about religion and faith and church. It's just something that I'm not well versed in and not really interested in generally, but I really think what Jonathan Franzen does so well here is that even if you don't like reading about these things, he uses faith in God and these discussions of Jesus and um, sinning and morality just to really get at the root of what these characters want and how they frame their own morality and the ways that they are s navigating their relationships to each other and with themselves. And I really thought it was an interesting look at the ways that faith kind of mirrors a general moral structure in terms of what do we want out of life? What do we what should we be doing? Where do our loyalties lie? When do we sacrifice ourselves for others? And using that framework with that I didn't really care for or I don't care for personally to really examine these things in a really interesting way. And I really loved it, which was interesting to me that he really used this in a way that wasn't annoying to me. I mean, it does get a little bit in the weeds of religion sometimes, but it really is rooted in a sense of morality throughout, which I really enjoyed. And he toes the line there. So it doesn't feel like a preachy book by any means, but it really makes you think about these kind of big picture things about one's purpose in life. Why are we here? Why do we treat others the way that we do? And like, how do we navigate those instances when we often feel inherently selfish sometimes? It was really interesting. And I liked the way he balanced that. One theme that I really, I saw repeated throughout was the sense of selflessness and whether any act can be truly selfless when we are often trying to improve ourselves and be better people and how these characters are all trying to help other people, namely those in their family, while also trying to feel better about themselves or get into a better standing personally in the midst of their family and the struggles that they're having with each other. We see these characters constantly tested by various issues such as motherhood, sibling relationships and rivalry among si siblings, favoritism amongst those siblings and the parent-child relationship, individual desires in marriage, addiction, abuse. There's a lot going on here and each character is treated so wonderfully in terms of each chapter, they're very long chapters. It's hard for me to call them chapters because they feel like parts in a sense, but each 
chapter focuses on a different person in this family and it's all told through the third person but we get a lot of time with every character here and that's what made me think more about this book being so long was that it was so necessary to be this long to set up whatever he's going to do in the next two novels but it's so important in getting at what Franzen is exploring here in terms of identity and misunderstanding of other people within your family you have to know what each of these characters is thinking and desiring to kind of understand the fraught tension between all of them and really figuring out what is the moral compass of every person here and whether people are bad or not or if it's just a simply complex look at humans generally and I think that's what it is here. I really care for all of these characters even when they piss me off at times or when I think they're doing something terrible. It's often in the name of kind of misunderstanding oneself and each other and having a difficult time expressing one's desires and trying to maintain a sense of loyalty to a family while still trying to be to put oneself first whether they want to or not. It was really interesting looking at all of that. It's a thing that's explored in a lot of family dramas I think but Franzen does it in a way that was just like so illuminating for me and I had so many thoughts while reading this that I wish I wrote down more when I was reading it to express it here but and so these questions of like agency and autonomy versus the expectation of family members on us and what the moral duty that we have to our family and when do we have to choose ourselves before them to ultimately be a better person for the family and for oneself setting those boundaries with family members was really interesting here and particularly with the mother character Marion here I think she has a really good exploration of her past and the way that it's impacting her motherhood now and the way that she is navigating her marriage and what's really interesting and kind of ironic about this is all of the characters start understanding their father and his adultery and his desire and he thinks he's covering it up so well but it's so clear that he is done with this marriage and the ways that the family has to navigate that including Marion herself but we get a glimpse into not a glimpse a long look at Marion's past which I thought was the strongest part of this novel was dissecting how Marion ended up where she is now and I loved that part of the novel so much it was just like unputdownable it was kind of like a train wreck hard to watch so well done so plotted so perfectly it was just uh Marion man I can't I want him to release the next two books so bad I need to know what happens to these characters I need to know where he's gonna go with this it was just so I care for these characters like what the hell it's crazy <laughs> but yeah like questioning whether we can really escape our past and how do we move forward from it do we have to acknowledge it in order to move past it or can we kind of do a clean cut and just kind of forget about what happened to us especially when it comes to new relationships that we form so you see Marion grappling with whether she needs to tell her story to certain people and how she does that through therapy but then does she need to do it with her husband or not does she need to spare him from some of the things that has happened to her do we necessarily need to hurt other people in our family in order to get closer to them or to be our full selves with them or is there a ways that we can keep certain things secret and kind of compartmentalize it and move past it personally to be okay with our present. I think Marianne explores those questions a lot and I loved that part of the book. Just the minutia of this book was so great to read as well in terms of a lot of it's rooted in music which I really liked. I loved Perry. Seeing him navigate his addiction was so sad and the ways that Jonathan Franzen describes Perry's addiction throughout this book was just like in terms of being immersive depictions of addiction I've ever read, it was so harrowing and so hard to read at times. Seeing the impossibility of him conquering this addiction at certain times in his life, it was so hard to read but it was so nuanced and well done and perfectly described in the prose. I remember this one sentence in which he describes how Perry makes a decision to take a drug from someone and the way that he describes it, I'll let you read it you'll, but you'll know when you get to it. It was just so, ooh, it, I had the chills when I read that sentence. Ugh. So good. Overall, I will wrap up my thoughts here. I absolutely love this book. I think it is a masterpiece of an introduction to a family saga. I want to read his backlist so bad now, especially the corrections. Um, I saw a critic, Adam Dalva, he had a Goodreads review up and he said, it's not quite as good as the corrections, but it's very close to it. And I'm like, damn, if something's better than this, like I need it now and I own a copy of it. So I might have to read that very soon. I kind of want to pace myself with Franzen because this book was so long and I don't want to spoil myself on the rest of his books, but Ugh, I cannot wait for people to read it so I can discuss it. I was fluctuating between a 4.5 and a 5 star review I think near the end of the book like in the last quarter of it There's this one section from Russ's perspective in which it kind of slows down for me a little bit But the things that end up happening after that were so necessary to the plot and really wrapped everything up so well that I was like, you know what? I'm giving it the five stars because there is so much good shit in this book. The emotional roller coaster that I went on reading this was wild. I posted a picture of this book when I was, I think, like halfway through it. And I said, this reminds me why I love fiction so much. And 
upon closing it, I can definitely reiterate that statement. This book is a novel. It is a novel and brought back the joys of reading that sometimes I feel like I go in waves of missing. And this book really reminded me of how powerful a book can be, how you can get such a great depiction of the human condition, basically. I know that sounds kind of corny to say, but that's really what this book is is mining. And I can't wait to see how he explores this further in different time periods and different contexts as this family grows. So I hope this review is helpful. I never do long reviews, but since I spent so much time with this book, I had to spit my thoughts out. If you end up reading this book, I hope you love it as much as I did. I can't wait to read more Jonathan Franzen. If you've read Franzen, let me know what I should read next by him while I wait for the next book in this trilogy. I have Freedom and I have The Corrections, and I know he came out with uh, Purity a couple of years back, and that one sounds good too. I think it's more modern about the internet, so that sounds good. But I hope you enjoyed the review, and until next time, cheers. <laughs> I gotta figure out a new closing when I don't have a beer with me. Oh, I get to use my water. Until next time, cheers.